let's do Arlong Park. So I, I was watching a show um, called Doomsday Preppers, and it's basically um, these people who are preparing like for the end of the world. Um, I don't know, man. I'm, I was kind of sold on the whole idea of the world could end through a multitude of things. And we've had some, like, near... I'll call them kind of near-miss events where, you know, like... Um, COVID was a good example of when, when the shit starts to hit the fan, you know what I mean? Like, there's People not... are fighting over fucking toilet Exactly. Toilet. I, like, you'll see, hum, you know, humanity kind of come out Some to an extent. It's a bit yeah. scary. So it's um the the show is on Disney and it covers basically just like these four different guys who are prepping for a doomsday. So one dude is like um preparing for a solar flare which I uh, which is like oh could come at any time and this you know just a flash from the sun basically will knock out all electronic equipment in Britain. Is his theory. Whether or not that's true or not. I don't know. I'm sure it's one of those things that that is a thing, but it's not gonna happen. Ah. Yeah. It's like the sun could spontaneously explode, yeah, but like the air could spontaneously become gold. Like, <laughs> ah. That can happen, but ah. it's not gonna. Yeah, ah. Um, and I, I wasn't, he does like a podcast. Um, all about doomsday prepping and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't, I wasn't too keen on him. This other dude's um, sort of retired, so he's got time for it. It's kind of like a hobby. Mm -hmm. So he's got what he's called like his bug out location, which is if it, the shit hits the fan, you need a bug out location. You need somewhere to go to when all of it starts kicking off. Um, which I was like, that's kind of sensible. He's just got this spot, middle of nowhere, set up with like um, a campfire and pre-chopped wood and and he's like I, I'm not like reducing my lifestyle he's like when I go out it's kind of like camping but he's like you know I've got a stove I've got my pot I get my pot of coffee I've got my books I've got entertainment there's a caravan he's got as well you know he's like it's just a spot to go to if you know the cities are burning to the ground and like the London riots was kind of what triggered him a wee bit. He's like, see when the London riots were happening, like these buildings were being set on fire, people were like looting and you know robbing shops and shit. Yeah. So that's kind of his rationale. So I was like, oh, that's fair enough. You know what I mean? Um, one other dude has a very similar, I'd say, kind of story to him. And then there's this dude who's taking it like to the extreme. He's like a pure sci science fiction um, writer, and he's. I think he's bailed to like Slovakia mm -hmm. and he's basically got a hundred acres like he lives on a wee farm yeah he like he kind of he's got hares like wee rabbits yeah um that he breeds and he's like trained himself and his kids to like kill the rabbits because he's like the hare is an ideal source of protein okay because they, he's like they're dead easy to rear they breed like well rabbits obviously um, and then ah, he's got the opportunity he's got all this land so I mean his house is powered just by wood so the heating system's all wood um, and I mean there's so much deer and shit like around him but he's like you know he said realistically it's easier to have rabbits just in a hutch let's say they, they grow really fast they're better than he said you know a deer will feed your family for like six weeks but they are, a, it's not like in the movies, they're like a bitch to fucking, like, go out and catch deer. Yeah. Um, Alright, so he's kind of taking it to the extreme. I folk will go hunting for like a weekend and sometimes they'll not catch anything. Right, exactly. And near him, he's got all this space and he said, see with deer especially, he said, deer are too fucking smart a lot of the time. Like, yeah. they'll hear you kind of like, from miles away. And even if you do hit them, he's like, you're not going to hit them with a bow and arrow like in TV shows. He's like, you'll hit them with like a, you know, a sniper rifle, but you'll need to catch them like dawn or dusk by the tree line. He said, because that's really the only time they come out. Um, and I don't, well, I don't know if that's entirely true, but that's what he was saying anyway. But I know, it's, I, it got me thinking of kind of doomsday prepping. So I was like looking at how much would it cost to get, you know, like, say, three months worth of food mm -hmm. just kind of put aside? 
in like tins and shit. Yeah, t- tins is what I was thinking. But the thing is, tins will last you about three years. Um, and with the amount you'd have to buy, I was like, you'd probably have to start eating it after about nine months. You know what I mean? And then constantly restock it, if you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that it doesn't go out, you know what I mean? So it doesn't go out of date. Um, but I, I was I was kind of into that idea. And we've got like tents. One of the boys, what he did was, and I thought this was quite clever, is he has a boat and his, his bug out location is like on a wee island somewhere. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so you can just like get on your boat, go out to this wee island and let kind of civilization wreck itself for a mm-hmm. few months. And then hopefully by that point it's all kind of calmed down. And I was like, that's not a bad shit, because like cities and shit, you would kind of say that they will, they'll just go to shit if it all kicks off. That's where all the shit is. Yeah, but it, one person starts freaking out. Well, well everyone else is doing it. Everybody else is freaking out. Well, that's that's why this the the guy in Slovakia was like, see these guys who have like pure big stores of tins. It's like you're never going to get the chance to sit and eat them because people will just start fucking raiding your house. Yeah. And I was like, I think that's a bit of a, a stretch about the breakdown of society. It's kind of like that no, episode... That's, that's, the, that's the worst extreme. Ah, exactly. Yeah. It's like that episode of Still Game where all the power goes out. Ah, and everybody's yeah, yeah. ah, everybody pure freaking out. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Like, like, do you think it's something that would likely happen? After all the COVID stuff, um, I mean, no, something extreme would have to happen, but yeah, it could, it would go that way. I mean, f- people were. Oh no, we, oh no, we might, we might have to s- stay in for a week, and they were like stockpiling and shit like that, and fighting over it, and fighting over crap. Like, looks that be funny, but how is toilet paper essential? I'm not exactly. That's what I'm saying by like. Someone will have been like, oh, I better grab some, and then everyone else is like, oh, this must be like a, a rare item, and you're like, no, it's toilet paper, man. Push game a shove, you take a shit, and then you just kind of like wash your butt in the. <laughs> well, that's what that's, I mean? that's that's what a bidet and all that is kind of. That's how it works. Yeah, I mean, it's not ideal if you're not used to it, but. Oh, I think you know, if you food go back, I at least get. See if you go back the other way. I think your route is kind of like on the left side of the map. There's like a gap in the fence. No left. Um. Are you following this guy? guy? I don't know, fair enough. Um, <clears throat> I mean, so stocking food, I, I agreed in some ways. And then Ethan kind of got into the idea as well and he was asking me, like, oh, who would your team be? Like, if, if you're, if like, you know, kind of more zombie apocalypse style, but he's like, who would your team be if uh, we had to doomsday prep? And I was like, that is a good question. I'm like, because more numbers means more mouths to feed, didn't it? But yeah, they just like, need to make sure everyone brings something to the table. Well, that's kind of how it came down to it. I was like, ah, well, um, obviously I'd have to take you, Ethan, I said. So me, you and your mum makes up the first three. I said, Amanda's dad's a good shout, because Amanda's dad has got, like, he, he can carve mm-hmm. um, pheasant and all sorts. He, you know, he'll chop up a rabbit. He knows how to do all that kind of stuff. So I'd be like, he's kind of useful to have around. Graham Gass, uh, another one of Amanda's dad's friends, has got like fucking crossbows and um, rifles and all sorts. So he'd be handy to at least provide the tools. I mean, he's a 70 year old dude, so we'd maybe just raid his house first. (laughs) But um, yeah, he'd steal his shit, but I thought in the spirit of survival, at very least I'd involve him in it. Um, we, we agreed we should bring yourself for Fortin because in the new world we'll inevitably need Fortin to protect the you know the borders and whatever else uh, yeah although people would be using weapons and shit so it would be a little bit you know they'd just be using blunt objects for the most part guns if they had them they really had guns in this country. and the thing is that was about six so is that six? One, two, three, four, five. No. Uh, I. Me and my You was six. I. So we agreed we bring Granny and Caitlin yeah. for medical experience. Yeah. Um, and probably we'd have to bring Freya. That'd be a condition. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I was kind of leaning towards not bringing Matt. Why? Uh, just cause. I was like, what does he bring to the table that no one else brings? Like weed. We don't need weed. <laughs> the new world won't need marijuana. Besides, we'll smoke it all. It's a liability. But then I'm struggling to think who my tenth was. Ah, uh, Douglas. We agreed we'd bring Douglas. Oh. Save Douglas. He, yeah, bring, he brings a strategy. Does he? No, not really. <laughs> but like, um, have you seen? Well, have you heard the Mighty Bush Radio Show? Yeah, not so well. Ah, it's like there's an old guy in it who they're like that, Uncle Albert or whatever his name is. He's good for the strategy or whatever. It's just yeah, yeah. it's just a thing they said about this guy. Uh, and it's kinda like that. It's like, yeah. So I uh, so that that was the team. That was the team of ten. And obviously if, if the camp uh, can accommodate more people then uh, you know we'll do that. Ah, you got you got to be careful how many people you the take good on. The thing about Scotland is like there actually is so much like wooded area and stuff like that. If you go like a wee bit north, ah, exactly. You could have like ten miles, like a ten mile radius just to yourself. Exactly, aye. But it's it's the gear. You no know, one would really find you unless they're like looking for you. There's an absolute lack of like um, I would say equipment that we currently have to accommodate it. Like we've got, Aye, I mean, we've that's got tents and shit. You need to get yourself some shotguns and all that crap. That's what I'm saying. That's what Graham Gas brings to the table. He brings the weaponry. Mm. So, you know, once once we've got the kind of weaponry, I think it is a, a different ball game. You know, I think looters are going to be less inclined to come our Aye, way. They'll raid cities and shit like that. They're not going to... Even if they came looking, you'd have so much space and what have you. Ah, you're harder to find. Yeah, well, you'd be harder to find and or the very least you'd see people coming. That's why I like the idea, that, like you say, this guy who, who's like, you know, I've designated this bug out location and the only way to get to it is by like a wee sort of sailboat. It's like, who's going to bother with yeah, us? Who's, who's got a boat to come do that? Aye, and who knows that there is, you know, you've established this spot as your bit. Yeah. They know you're there, then they need to procure a boat, and then they need to do whatever else, and they need to come over and take this where we're going, and yeah, the majority of folk about that's not worth the effort. Yeah, exactly, right. you, you quicker raid cities and stuff, but obviously the supply chain, as soon as like, the idea is this is this is a major sort of disaster that would cause us, so you're talking like supply chain losses. Yeah. Wolfed. Every 10 of is now a... Uh, yeah, a bajillion dollars. One of them was talking about economic collapse. Um, and you're kind of like, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, yeah. um, but what, you know, what caused the kind of economic collapses is um, sole, cur- you know, sole currency and like obscene debt with nowhere to shift it. Yeah. We don't really have those problems anymore. In the 19, 1900s, you had that kind of problem. Of living crisis and everything else. Adventure revolting. They love it. They love it. Well, the cost of living crisis is kind of specifically because of the cost of fuel. Um, it's a lot of shite. <laughs> it's not a lot of shite. Well, no, I mean, it is. I'm just it's, a sh- like, it's a lot of shite that it's happening, but it's yeah. it's not shite why it's well, happening I to an extent. The economics, but what I'm just saying it's shit. It's, the problem is, though, we've got it worse in this country. Um, be- because of the last 20 years or so of bad economics in the UK you know um, and at the moment where we're sitting it's, it's a big problem because you don't really know where it's how it's going to fix it you know everyone's kind of waiting for the next general election and it's like well fuck's sake it's, it's just going to be another two years before we're kind of getting on top of the problem right. that's, that's the bit that's kind of really annoying Because, like, oh shit, Usopp's trying to make a bail. Gonna have to run to him. Where is he? Down left hand corner. Move, Luffy. <laughs> oh no, baby Luffy doesn't move with any speed. He's a pastry man. Man, he's miles away. Oh no, he's not. Um, Alright, so I was watching this thing and it was this guy talking about it. He's an economist. Talking about why 
why it's so bad in the UK? And he's like, because we've got inequality and um, no growth in the UK. Yeah. It's like just those two pr big problems. And he said, we've had that since the 1980s. So the inequality started back then with the closure and removal of a lot of manual labour jobs. Mm -hmm. um, but they so, weren't replaced by anything. Exactly. So middle to high earners did really well during that period mm -hmm. because they started looking at things like, you know, um, cross-national banking and cross-national trade. And mm -hmm. so a lot of the, the, the middle and high earners did really well during that period, which created inequality. Um, and we're still kind of suffering from that because we've, we've still got inequality now. Not as bad as the States, but uh, it's kind of... It, there's no route at the moment to kind of solve it. Because people, again, they go back to 1980s with Thatcherism and they're like, look, at least Thatcherism, whether you like it or not, was a fucking plan. It was like, she was like, yeah, I'm going to shut all the coal mines, I'm going to do this, I'm going to trade with Europe, I'm going to, you know, we're, we're going to become a mass importer non-export and like that's that's what we're going to do it was like right okay cool it, whether it was right or wrong is kind of debatable it was a plan at the end of the day mm -hmm. and that's what we lack at the moment we lack a kind of plan of uh, what we're going to do they flip flop constantly Aye. I see it in the news and everything just, uh, Big Rishi had some plan about fucking um, the environment and all that shit was it like all oh, something about waste like um these big companies had to be like carbon neutral by like 2030. Now it's been pushed back to like 2035 or something uh, like that. You're like, so, so it means fuck all then, you'll get, it'll get pushed back again. You'll, okay. you'll flip flop right. on it depending on who's putting money in your pocket. You're like, you're like, you're well, that's, that's the concern, isn't it? Is if we keep pushing these environmental things back, we don't have, we don't have the years. Yeah. They reckon we've, the coral's gonna die and then when all the coral dies, like, uh, I watched this really depressing documentary about the coral called Chasing Coral. Um, it was done by the same guy who did this other one, which was all about um, the social dilemma, which yeah. is all about why phones are so bad for us socially. Um, and that at least had a solution. You know, it had some stuff that was like, you know, here, here's a solution to kind of the problems. And it was like turning off notifications would really help people. Um, you know, fact checking and stuff like that, not assuming that everything you read on the internet first time is correct. Yeah. Um, so there was kind of some hope, but with the chasing coral, he's like, no, we're fucked. He's like, even conservative projections, and this 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 documentary is like 10 years old, it's like conservative projections show that all the coral in the ocean will be dead by like 2030. Because every time the water gets too hot, it basically just, it, it, it's what called like um, bleaching, uh -huh. like bleaches the coral. And, um, he's like, we're just, we're killing it off in mass amounts. Yeah. The, the planet temperature is too hot and the water temperature is too hot as well. And the problem is that that, the water is taking a lot of the, the hit for kind of global warming. So if we lose that kind of support, then land temperature will just start getting hotter as well. So it's a, it was a depressing story without a kind of a solution. It was like, oh, yeah. but a bit like the whole um, Black Lives Matter thing. It was like, oh, I, so what you can do is you can sign up and raise awareness and give us money. And I was a bit like, fuck you. I you will do what? Like exactly. I, exactly. It was just, oh, we'll raise awareness. It was like, yeah, but raising awareness doesn't, Lower the water temperature. Like, what, are you at? what is your five year plan? Uh, what's, the so, what's the solution? I was like, oh, we need to get decarbonized. But as we've just seen there, like Rishi Shunak and Prime Ministers are just like, I don't give a fuck. Can you make it? I, I, I know it's such a, I'm such a like whole freedom guy and like I'm always thought about slippery slopes and all that, but like at this point, that's what the government's for is no, you're gonna fucking kill us all and end the, end the world. Get fucked. It's the law. You can't be potent anymore. Over like overnight, not get fucked. You can't do that shit anymore. Then he actually grow some balls and just do it. But they won't because they don't give a fuck. They give a fuck about who's giving them money. So like well, that's always been the risk. The problem with politicians is, I mean, don't get me wrong. They get paid a lot in terms of normal people, right? But like, Boris Johnson, what what was it like? Eight hundred thousand a year was his salary when he was like. 
Pretty nice minutes stuff. or what have you. Huh? And he called it chicken feed. So it's like that just shows you like when he was working as a banker or whatever the fuck he was doing he was making way more than that aye but so those are the people that like are whispering in the ears of like those in power and so like oh we're pushing through this um this environmental order nah don't do that that'll fuck over our, our bottom line alright no bother and then they just don't and then okay exactly that right. it's, that's the concern isn't it I think that the, f- the whole system's cut up in terms of politicians and what have you. I think there's a switch nearby. Uh, I think there is. I think like, oh, so there's an exclamation mark up where these guys are. I right, what's that thing? Nice. Aye, uh, so it's all a bit doom and gloom, unfortunately. And um, the economic situation, because there's no. Like, like I mean, if you, want to, if you want to do Marxism, do Marxism. It's like, fine, whatever. I'm not telling you the best political course to follow, but pick something. You know what I mean? Pick some kind of, like, financial plan. You're going to help the poor. You know? So you can solve inequality by increasing benefits for poor people. Yeah. Which is kind of the approach they've taken. But it's a bit temporary. Yeah. That is the problem, is that... It's a whole give a man a fish thing. Yeah, it is exactly that. It's like, well, where, where are the good jobs? Where's the training? Where's the competition? You know, because you can weed out bad companies with a bit of natural. And again, that's what Maggie, to, to her credit, that's what Maggie Thatcher was trying to do. Was like, um, if we expand economies to the wider, like the global market, it eliminated a lot of the shitholes in Britain that were just like, you know, mm. not paying fair wages because they were just. Aye, they were just shit. They didn't they, they didn't pay their workers well. They weren't good companies to be part of. But they were in many ways the only local game in town. Yeah. So it was like get fucked. We wanna be global. But we've gone back on that by Brexit and all that shit. So it's a bit like okay, whatever. But it's like what's our alternatives? You know, we've been talking about trade deals and stuff with other people and it's like that's not happening. Oh, this is a cheery episode, isn't it, man? Just right. talking shit about fucking how it's all doomsday. So all I'm, all I'm trying to get to people is you should have your own doomsday plan. Aye. You know what I mean? For when society collapses and we go back to, you know, Victorian era lifestyles, you need to be prepared for it. You need to know how to live that kind of lifestyle. Yeah, you know? I mean, do you know how to hunt? Do you know how to, like, grow food? Uh, go back to where you came, I think. Right. Not aye, because that one red area I think is the one that you need to smash, and then you can get in that last one. Um, do I know how to grow food? I mean, I do to an extent. Yeah. Well, it's probably just, probably just as well. Up. You're part of my ten man team. Ah, okay. So I don't need to know if I've got your my team. I know how to grow food. I know we can't grow enough food for ourselves where we're at. Which is why I think a stockpile is a sensible well, yeah, you would need one, initial, right? you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying, a free so, And stuff doesn't grow overnight, you'd need a little sort of cushion, you'd need like a little while so wet stuff. I'm talking about a three month supply yeah. for of black beans basically. Because I think a lot of the other stuff, right, it's, it's the expiration of it. The rate you'd have to eat it is part of the problem. Is because for it not to, you know what I mean, go completely to waste. Yeah. Like, there's an episode of The Office where like Dwight's just pure yeah, eating his like, ah, uh, he's just pure sitting eating his man's stock. Yeah, like, like three years old, he's like, I was still like six months up to Friday. And it's like, that's that's nonsense. You wouldn't just sit and eat a whole tin of gherkins, right? So, like I say, it, the reality is it lasts about three years. So to me, you'd have to, I think you need to go around the other way actually now. Right, you have to go right. all the way around. Yeah, that's out of ten. Um, it seems a daft way to make it you know but that's, that's kind of why is he trying to flee he's fucking fighting some nebdy but uh, that's how I'd be thinking that's my thinking I'm going to get I think a three month supply of black beans because I will eat black beans um, and then I don't know I'll, I'm going to look at a rabbit a rabbit seems like a good shout like that guy was like these rabbits are dead easy to keep. Uh-huh. They're like a great source of protein. Um, I I like the sound of just keeping a few, 
you know, a boy rabbit and a wee girl rabbit, and yeah. that's you. If you need to start growing rabbits, he's like, you know, as soon as I know society's about to collapse, that's it. Load up the rabbits and just get them doing rumpy pumpy from day one. Nah, I'm not just be everywhere. Nah, see, it won't let you through this way. Trying to go all the way back now? I don't know. Maybe? Oh, uh, I think I do, because they were all congregating over there. Because growing food as well is costly and time consuming and you need the land and uh, it's a lot of complications. Yeah. I've got a boat, so I've already got like camping gear and a boat. How did you get a boat? We bought an inflatable boat. Oh, did you? Aye. So it's like a, th you could get two of us in it. You probably couldn't get all three, but you could, you know, ship one man at a time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna f I'm gonna find a bug out location. Yeah. So I'm gonna establish a kind of go to point for um, us to go to somewhere fairly remote. Amanda was like, "Go to Balmaha." I'm like, "Nah." There's like speedboats and stuff. It's about forty five minutes to an hour. <laughs> And it's stuff like in uh, in The Walking Dead, like fuel starts to expire. Does it? Aye, uh, fuel starts to go off. I didn't know that. No, you, you can't just have diesel indefinitely. Oh, I did not know that. I don't really. I just. I guess I just never really thought about it. Mm. So I, I don't know exactly how long it takes, but aye, uh, your fuel your fuel kind of expires, so you, your mobility is limited. Yeah. So you want to you want to try and get somewhere immediately that you can live off of. I am not have to be driving about back and forth. Aye. Ah. And then what you kind know, of want a spot and you just hang out within walking slash and like bicycling kind of distance. Well, exactly. We've got bikes as well, so I mean, and motorbikes are, are quite good in some ways, bad in others. Because it's good that, you know, they're lower fuel consumption. Yeah. But yeah, you can't so carry as much. Uh, so I, I'd be looking to get the bug out. One thing I, I didn't say about is water. Water consumption is more costly than food. So like I say, I'd be wanting three months of beans. I've not even started looking at kind of a water stock. But you can get like desalination tablets and stuff like that. You know, so you can like just get fresh. It's easier for us in Scotland because right, fresh water. Yeah. Good fresh water up here. And then, yeah, you can get like a... Uh, clothing tablets and shit like that to purify stuff if needs be. Uh, and I mean, water's more hard to come by, I'd say. Or sorry, you'll die faster without water than you will without food. Yeah, you need it every day. Got adequate kind of stores of fat. You know, three months or whatever I think it is you can go without food. Potentially. First, yeah. Versus like water, you've got like three days. So you just got to, let's say, do, do all that stuff. And that's, that's the prep plan. There's nothing else to it, I think. We should talk about a zombie prep plan specifically, though. Um, next time, because that would be... I have more thoughts on that, because I've thought about it more. <laughs> I think it's the same plan, though. Um, so I, think, plan. I, I think, yeah, probably. Um, short term, though. I, I honestly, I'm sure everybody thinks this, but I think I'd survive a zombie apocalypse easily. <laughs> It depends. See if they're like Walking Dead zombies or they're slow. Then yeah, I think easy. You'd probably struggle with the uh, pretending to be a zombie part. Uh, yeah, but would you have to do that? Well, based on certain movies like Shaun of the Dead and that, you know, it's a viable tactic is just pretend to be a zombie. They kind of do that in The Walking Dead. Ah, uh, they do that. Anyway. Uh, exactly. Uh, they, they cover themselves. Ah, the yeah. uh, they cover themselves in the entrails or whatever. <laughs> Mega kick. Oh, bent his nose. Look how high up that kick comes. Oh, Spine breaker. The crazy surprise, man.
Does he have gun gun powers or is he just um, no, just no, I'm a fish, fish man. man. No, I'm just fish man. But there is that they believe themselves more superior to the humans in this. Mm. And I mean, when the ocean, yeah, aye, when their world's like ninety nine percent ocean, you're kind of like, aye. I suppose you got a point because they just swam out. So. Big stuff. We bring brings him down with the power of friendship and whatever. Puts a hat on her. And fucking battle axes his hoofs. How come I'm getting so low in the middle thing? What does that mean? The exclamation marks. Yeah, like money or. Nah, exclamation marks are like the. Um, from using your like super boost and then beating up guys. Oh, when you beat right, up guys. See, I've only been using that against like boxes. Ah, uh, you need to use it like quite a lot and beat up as many people as possible. Right, while so it's you better on like big groups rather than like bosses. Uh, especially you can equip guys with powers as well some of the powers right. like there's one called like can't conquer as hacky or something that yeah. just straight up stuns everybody within like a pure mile radius of your character uh -huh. and they all just exclamation mark and drop like a sack of spuds and then you can just start throwing kicks and whatever to finish them off decent I'll make that man uh -huh. 